I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about an example of earned security. So the reason that we're doing this video is because Margaret came across an article and an, a great example of how somebody became secure. Right. Is that right? Exactly, yes. And so she's really enjoyed this article and you guys are gonna like this one too because I can tell you Margaret was excited to share it. Honest to God I was. I was excited to read it and I'm yeah. excited to share it. Yeah. So in the last video we mentioned four processes that you have to do mm -hmm. and they were coherence, you're going to tell a coherent life story, uh -huh. okay? Coherence, collaboration, you're going to know that it's important to share it with somebody once you've done it. Mm -hmm. Mentalization, you're going to be able to look at the the cast of the play you're going to describe mm -hmm. and speculate on what was going on with the characters. Okay, and the last one was... Reflection. Reflection on thinking about how this reflects on you and your life and your world. Now, when you say the last video, she's talking about the earned security right. video the that we did security. recently. Yeah. So just keep okay. that in mind. <laughs> this is a follow-up on that. Yeah. Okay. If someone can work on those four difficult tasks... They will be able to remember negative experiences with compassion and contextual understanding rather than shame and self-blame. Yep. They will have compassion for themselves as children and at least an understanding of where the parents were coming from. Which is kind of what I touched on in that last video about right. how... I was able to look at yes, my own yes, parents and why they split up without right. looking at it with being angry and blame, but from a place of understanding of why it didn't work out and how to fix that and how to, right. you know, it became my passion to teach it. Yes. Right? Yes, absolutely. Um, and some of the good news is most people I talk with have a good idea of what happened to their own parents. and understand that they were likely abandoned or abused as well. Yeah. Okay. And it does make a difference. Otherwise you tend to blame yourself. Yeah. Kids blame themselves for everything anyway. Yeah. So it's part to partly to neutralize that. Individuals who are earned secure had early attachment failures, but developed the capacities we just reviewed, mm -hmm. and we just mentioned the four of them. Yep. These capacities allow for the development of trust, self-expression, self-compassion, self-care, self-protection, self-efficacy, meaning that you can see that you have an impact on the world, mm -hmm. and healthy, intimate relationships. Trauma can cause brain dysregulation, mm -hmm. but we have learned from other disciplines neuroscience and interpersonal neurobiology that trusting relationships and communication have the ability to heal the brain, the mind. Yes, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? It's wonderful. <laughs> it's amazing. Yes, it is. It's absolutely amazing that it, is, it can be reversed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, adults with an avoidant attachment style felt rebuffed by parents or caregivers in childhood mm -hmm. and are thus frightened to develop love relationships in adulthood. There is a case study attached to some of what we just explained, mm -hmm. attached to these thoughts that earn thoughts about earned attachment. Okay. It is about a woman whose mother left her in the car for a few hours and watched TV Ooh. after bringing her home from the hospital. <gasps> What? She just left her in the car. A there. newborn infant in the car? Yeah. For a few hours and she, while she went in and watched TV. How? What? 
she, I mean, either she was dissociated and forgot the kid in the car, or she really had terribly mixed feelings about having this child. Oh my gosh. I know, it's startling. It is. But you do hear, you do hear stories like this. Eventually, she brought her in the house. <laughs> That's good. The baby's father had already abandoned the family before she was even born. And her mother was abusive in every imaginable way to her. Ugh. She would hit her for everything she didn't do right as mother saw it. Mother had ridiculous standards of perfection and would hit her constantly mm. while intruding on her as she did her homework, telling her she didn't do it right and she didn't do it fast enough. She wanted to play softball, this woman did, and the mother made her practice at all hours of the day and night so that she would be perfect at it. Okay? She probably imagined her mother as the ball. Absolutely, and I hope she did. I hope she did. Boy, this kid never misses, misses a pitch. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, the Terrible. therapy that I'm going to comment on was 62 sessions, which I figured out if you did it weekly, pretty much, it would be over a period of about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, but 62 sessions sounds overwhelming at first. Yeah. All right. At various points in the therapy, I mean, I can't present the whole case right case to you, which I'd love to do if I could. At various points in the therapy, there would be signs of progress. One day, the woman came in and said she had concluded that everyone in the world is not like her mother. That would be a huge conclusion of a person whose wife was, life was completely, completely controlled by this woman. She would be suspicious of anything about anybody else that even remotely reminded her of her mother. Wow. Okay. So eventually she figured out that not everybody is like mother. She must have been very happy about that conclusion. Oh, thank God. Not everybody's like her. Mm -hmm. Another day she came she in. She must have felt like every, everything was a trap. Absolutely. Like you can't everything trust anybody. Was a trap. Can, absolutely, exactly. That's how she felt. Another day she came in and announced that she now had three friends. When she began, she had no friends and wasn't sure she wanted or needed any, okay? Um, another day, she had, came in reporting that she had set limits with a bullying co-worker. Wow. Can you imagine how terrified she would have been to do that? Yeah, that because beginning? she's been bullied her whole life. Bullied her whole life. and see, Even see, when the mother brought her home from the hospital. Absolutely. Before she even got in the house, she was bullied. Ugh, right? That's horrible. It really is horrible. How did she find out? Did the mother admit to it? Somebody must have told her, yeah. I doubt if the mother admitted to it, but somebody must have known. There might have been some neighbor or, some, or a relative across the street who was watching. If uh, you have children, you you know the day that imagine? you brought those children home. Yeah. I remember, I could still picture it right now, yeah. the day I brought my kids home. Okay. I mean, it's a big deal. It's a big moment. Yeah. So she set limits with a bullying coworker, which means... She had already made tremendous progress by that time and at least had concluded that she didn't deserve to be bullied. Okay? Um, wow. Another day she came in and said she had accepted two compliments, one from her supervisor and one from a friend. Now, someone like, like this would have absolutely no reason to know how to accept a compliment. Yeah. And I've had people say to me when I said something nice to them, they pay you to say that. Yes. Right? Yes. You said that to me only because they pay you to say that. Yeah. And I say, no, they can't pay me enough. Um, if I didn't mean it, I wouldn't say it. Yep. You know? But people don't know how to take in positive stuff if all they grew up with was negative. And you have to stop the conversation and say, now let's take a look at this. Okay, you're so unused to hearing anything good about yourself, you don't know what to do. Yeah. Or they wonder what are the strings. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you're saying nice things to me, what I don't do, trust this. What do I owe you? Yeah, I don't mm. trust this. Where are the strings? Because you this? can imagine that mother wasn't complimenting her. Oh God, on anything ever. So she received and accepted, and accepted is the important part. Two compliments: one from her supervisor and one from a friend. Toward the very end of the therapy, she said, and this is the denouement, I was a good kid and I did not deserve all that abuse. I probably took 58 of the 62 sessions to get to that point, okay? Um, okay, now here are some of the 
therapist, the doctor's comments on the whole thing. And he notes that just as therapy was ending, she said, I feel like I was safe here and we could process things together. Then I would leave and go off into the world and try things. But then I could always come back and check in with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he likens it to a secure base. That's right. He Just says, like a, a, can I say it? Sure. A, a child, a, a toddler, they go off, they play, and then they're not too sure. They come back to their secure base. And hold on to mom's knee for a while mm -hmm. before they go off and explore again. Yeah. Um, and what he says is, this is an almost perfect description of the attachment concept of the secure base, in which the attachment figure, in this case the therapist, served as a launching point for safe exploration of the world and of the safe haven in which one can return, to which one can return to the attachment figure for comfort. And I'm willing to bet that's how many of our viewers Absolutely. feel coming to us. Absolutely. That they yep. can go off, try yes. those things. And, and they can go off and try things and then they can sometimes talk with us again. They talk with us, they watch the videos. That's right, yep. So I thought all in all, it was a spectacular article. Um, if you're really interested, I can tell you a little bit more of the process. Let us know if you're interested. Okay. Um, okay, but I just love that this guy knew exactly what he was doing and he did it from an attachment perspective. Yep. Yeah. Well, as Margaret and I have been, you know, saying for years now, we really feel like attachment and understanding attachment is really, um, it's progressing mental health. Absolutely. And it's helping us yep. understand anxiety, depression, trauma, all those things so much more clearly than yes. we did even 20 years ago. Even 20 years ago. Even 20 years, I mean, there's still some denial about trauma now, but it's come miles. No, there's not. Yes, there is. There's some denial about trauma now, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did I just last say reasonable people can disagree? Oh, oh, shucks. Uh, I, I, one of us is in denial. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, but anyway, this is new and it's so welcome. And as I was doing the research, I did see that people have developed stuff for parents to nurture attachment in a different way. Most of the parents who've raised kids in the last 50 years, say, had no idea. Of, of all of this yep. and you know it's not fair to blame them the only attitude you can take is they did the best they could everybody does the best they can and it is what it is you know? I truly believe that as more clinicians are trained about attachment absolutely. and more research is done absolutely. it's going to truly change the field and hopefully they'll start teaching attachment to parents absolutely. and so we can change generations yes. and make people's mental health so much easier from early childhood. And the most blatant example of attachment failure that we see in the world is people who have no empathy, people who can't put themselves in other people's position and at least speculate or mentalize mm -hmm. um, how they feel and why they're behaving the way they do. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sure. All right. Good stuff. I Hopefully hope you liked it. You liked it. Give Margaret a thumbs up for her research. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret, of course, is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. That's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.